some aneurysms are very risky to a patient. They affect about 1 to 2 percent of the population. Only a small proportion of those patients will go on to have a rupture. And the challenge with rupture is that it's unpredictable. So the typical presentation is somebody who has the worst headache of their life, they come to the ER and that event could be a final event, it could be a fatal event. But it is a very challenging situation when an aneurysm ruptures. An aneurysm can cause one type of stroke which is subarachnoid hemorrhage or an intracerebral hemorrhage which is bleeding into the brain and into the layer that lines the brain. Bleeding into the brain is a very serious problem. It is very important to make the diagnosis when somebody has uh, an aneurysm and that requires what we call detective work by uh, the emergency room physicians and team and along with the neurology and neurosurgery team to make the right diagnosis. An aneurysm can give a warning sign, so patients can have what we call a sentinel headache or a warning headache that may imply that a bigger headache or a bigger uh, rupture is coming. So about 20% of patients who rupture an aneurysm in a big way have a warning headache a week or two weeks before. And it's very important for a patient to seek medical opinion when that happens, and it's very important for the medical team to make the diagnosis when that happens. Aneurysms can also press on adjacent brain tissue and cause double vision or other symptoms of pressure. Aneurysms can also leak into the surrounding brain tissue and that can cause seizures. So a seizure can be related to an aneurysm. Rarely an aneurysm can also form clot within it and that clot can travel downstream and cause an ischemic stroke. Or if you come from a family with aneurysms, smoking is a very bad idea because smoking is a risk to any person in terms of developing an aneurysm and rupturing an aneurysm, but if you have a genetic family history of aneurysms, your risk is probably four to eight fold higher. In patients with polycystic kidney disease, particularly if there's a family history of aneurysms, so if you have a family history of both, your risk of having an aneurysm could be as high as 30 percent. We are now living in a time that is very exciting in terms of what we can do for patients with aneurysms. We have the traditional open surgical approaches, which have benefited from an evolution towards less invasive approaches, some of which we've designed here at Mayo Clinic. The technology we have today to navigate in a minimally invasive way into the brain and open up a closed brain vessel has never been better. We now have devices that are designed to open up brain vessels that c where we can achieve a great result within 30 minutes of putting the patient on the table and doing the procedure. We also have many techniques now where we don't need to ma make an incision and we can go through a groin artery and tunnel up a catheter into the brain and through a small catheter seal an aneurysm from the inside with coils or with a stent or a combination of coils and stents. And so that, that has been in a very exciting evolution in the last 10 to 20 years and particularly in the last five years where the stents have become safer, easier to use, and more predictable in how they work. I think patients with brain aneurysms have never had as many good options as they have today.